Welcome to our video knowledge series by Adgali in partnership with MFilter. Today, we will turn the spotlight on the OTT sector, which has been seeing unprecedented growth that has been further accelerated by the nationwide lockdown. India is currently the world's fastest growing OTT market and is all set to emerge as the world's sixth largest market by 2024, as per industry reports. The sector is expected to grow at a CAGR of 28.6% over the next four years to touch revenues of $2.9 billion. Today, there are close to 100 odd OTT platforms across video, music, podcast, and audio streaming categories. The average time spent by Indian users on OTT platforms has increased tremendously since early March. OTT also became the platform for movie premieres as cinema halls were shut down for an extended period and going forward would offer a captive audience for offbeat and low budget films. With new players joining the fray, sharper regional OTT game plans, growing competition, OTT is an interesting space to watch out for. Today, we have with us Divya Dixit, Senior Vice President and Head of Marketing Alt Biology, which has been at the helm of innovation and bold content. Hello, Divya. Welcome to our today's session. Divya, my first question to you is, how do you view growth of the OTT sector in India? What is the growth trajectory that you see it taking going forward? Okay, so uh, first of all, thank you so much, Bijoya, for having me here. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think for quite some time now, everybody's been talking about OTT being the sunrise industry, OTT being on the rise, etc. cetera. I, I, I don't think any longer that OTT is the sun, sunrise industry. It's, it's, it's grown. It's, it's, it's now on uh, a trajectory which is probably uh, in terms of the growth percentage at 26.8% year on year growth, beating the other mediums, whether it be television, print, et cetera, et cetera, right? That's one part, sheer numbers and percentage that speak for itself in terms of growth. The other part is of course, the fact that I think OTT is also becoming a choice of content destination. When I say choice of content destination, it's from two perspectives. The first perspective is from the creator perspective. So whether it's news, whether it's music, whether it's sports, whether it's entertainment and off late even movies, they're choosing to be digital, right? Because thanks to the geification of the country now, it's, it's, it's getting very well penetrated across the country, right? So all these content creators see value in digital and being present on digital. That's one part. That's the creation and the publishing part. The other part is the consumer. Why publishers are there? Because consumers are there. Why are consumers there? Consumers are there because it's it's just the convenience. It's the ease. I can see when I want to see. I don't have to pick up a newspaper with my morning tea in the morning. If I choose to meditate with my morning tea, I can meditate and I, you know what, I can catch up with the news any time of the day. I can catch up with my favorite music while I'm walking. Um, I can see whatever that I want to see, whenever I want to see. I think these are the things which are driving OTT consumption. And because OTT consumption is being driven by the consumers, the publishers of all sorts of content are choosing to be on OTT. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about it, but recently there was an article that, um, you know, uh, there are Hollywood movies, prime Hollywood movies, and I'm forgetting the name of that movie, the news came out yesterday, are choosing to be streaming on OTT platforms at simultaneously along with theatrical release, right? So there is value in digital. It's not about just OTT. It's about the digital platform and the digital ecosystem. So I think globally, uh, people are seeing value in digital now, and that should lead to revenue growth, which is the next step for the industry. For any industry to stabilize, the business model and the revenue model needs to work. Uh, whether it's SVOD, whether it's AVOD, whether it's a mixture, whether it's t board, the revenue model has to work. Now, with this kind of growth consumption by audience, I believe revenue is going to happen. Like I've 
been seeing in so many platforms in america digital revenue is already over overtaken the broadcast revenue uh, we are hoping to see a similar play happening in india maybe not so soon but hopefully soon enough sorry you're on mute i i can't hear sorry my next question is sorry sorry uh, is ott still a layer on the top does it still remain entertainment for the niche so i think my first question sort of must have thrown a little bit of insight into what i uh, you know you already asked me but having said that the fact that even the um, giants right as uh, and the, let me name them netflix amazon prime video etc have started creating indian content whether it's hindi or whether it's other languages the fact that they are creating colloquial content means that ott is reached the masses it's no longer just a layer on the top or meant for the metro consumers for me as far as i'm concerned as a marketer india is into two sections clear divided sections one is the metro india that we call india and then there is bharat sorry uh, if you're speaking i i can't hear you because you're again on mute but what i want to sorry you're saying something to me and i can't hear no, you no no okay no. okay i'm sorry i thought you were saying something to me so there is the metro india and then there is the bharat now the real growth if you look at it from a digital perspective and these are numbers available for everybody to see the next billion as we call the next billion digital will come from smaller towns smaller cities right not only india but across the globe as well there are very few countries that are 100% digitally connected like china uh, it's almost 96% digitally connected right that's a huge connection percentage india still has to be there india is still only 50% digitally connected having said that to put the perspective of ott being now a mass play i think at all we started doing that when we said we will create content for the mass bharat we want to create content for the bharat we are a mainstream ott platform and that is what we are focusing upon so i don't think ott is any longer just a niche player or a layer on the top you know to be available if people want to see i think slowly it's getting into the mainstream media and content and we are there um, it's the availability of diverse kind of content across indian languages which will drive its growth further i think of course with you know the digitization support of the uh, geofication support of the fact that you know digital is also the cheapest in india supported so all these factors put together and the audience having paucity of time and wanting to do things at their own Uh, convenience it's also an attitude shift right of course the fact with covid people choose to be at home choose to consume content more etc etc so all these things will contribute i believe uh, my third question is with the growing competition and the content being churned out do you see some consolidation happening in the near future uh so of course uh today we are almost uh, you know 40 plus ott players in this country with quite a few of them all have already shut down right as we are aware uh due to paucity of business or revenue the business model not being stable etc etc i do believe that in near future and we we've seen this happening in broadcast as well i come from broadcast so i'll give you that example there was a time when in 2008 when there were some 15 gec channels right today we have 5 gec channels main gec channels that survive and basically take almost 80% of the revenue pie right so in that scenario uh, as the business models evolve as the revenue streams evolve for all uh, what channels as the investments from other fundraisers become more uh, how do i say uh, revenue oriented rather than pure investment and just pure numbers oriented you know when when uh, ott platforms actually start questioning the profitability of their business at that point of time and i think that point of time is now happening i mean i was just seeing today jio and they have already launched their postpaid card with uh, netflix amazon and disney hotstar right so there is going to be an aggregation probably 6 months down the line we should see a whole lot more of aggregation but aggregation need not be people shutting down shops and you know uh, just be becoming a content supplier aggregation can also be co-production deals like we are in a co-production deal with zipai 
aggregation can also be available on multiple telcos, multiple other platforms that help you get you more subscribers to enhance your revenue system. So there are in digital ecosystem, people are continuously experimenting to see what keeps them, you know, going, what, what keeps that next quarter fueled uh, so that they can plan for the next half yearly financial or the next financial. So we're all experimenting. I think we will see a lot of co-productions, aggregations, partnerships as the industry is already seen. You know, as uh, you know, content as a content out as, as a marketer, you've kind of seen, you know, the research that goes behind creating some kind of content, you know, uh, when before you put up put out that content, I'm sure you do some kind of a test marketing, you kind of show showcase it to people in, internally, oh. your set of friends. Yeah. So my question from there is, how are consumers, according to you, absorbing content in India differently from the global markets? So uh, I, I'll say one thing, uh, at Alt, we are a globally oriented app. So we have a lot of diaspora that comes across from UK, US, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Fiji Islands, uh, you know, uh, Dubai, Middle East. So we get a lot of, even Southeast Asia, right? There are apparently Indian stars are very, very famous and especially our neighboring South countries, they are they're crazy about Indian stars. So uh, if I were to talk about alt and Hindi content, I think the aesthetics of consuming the contents are largely same for Hindi speaking diaspora spread across the globe, right? What we... Uh, for example, Spain. We get a lot of downloads in Spain. What I realized is why? Because Spanish shows, if you see them, the way you know they are, and there are a lot of dubbed Spanish shows uh, on uh, other platforms, their culture, the way that they handle drama, thrill, etc., is very similar to Indian culture, even Turkish shows for that matter. So Spain, Turkey, you know, these are the kind of global audience that fit in very well with the kind of Indian dramas, Indian thrill, Indian action. So I, I think there is a lot of similarity that we see in content consumption out there. Uh, in terms of the Indians per se consuming content, I think our Indians love a good story. And that is what I have realized. Also, I think people are getting a little slightly bored with, you know, seeing the same kind of content. And it's, 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 it's not, I think, the medium issue. It's because television today is under such harsh SMP broadcast practices. So pushing the envelope in terms of a narrative, in terms of a storytelling, also becomes very difficult. So while Indians love narratives in their language, Indians also love great narratives so it's not very different from a global audience in that perspective and that's why i drew this similarity to a turkish show or a spanish show if you remember turkish dubbed shows in hindi have done really really well i mean i come from uh, a network where uh, we used to run a whole channel uh, for turkish hindi dubbed shows and they used to do beautifully they had such a huge loyal following yeah. So I don't think Indian audience is very different from global audience in terms of content consumption. The Hindi diaspora, anyway, which is spread across the globe, they love to see the shows that we give out. And that's what our, uh, you know, subscription base, the download base tell us. Uh, I think it's the power of the medium which allows you to push the narrative envelope and give you stories that are segmented. So if Vijoya, for example, is not a Fitra consumer and is more of, let's say, a mom consumer or a body consumer, then I will not show Vijoya for Fitra, right? And that is when the audience truly starts appreciating a platform, when the content discovery is there, fitting into their content choices. I think digital has that power and digital has a power to push the envelope on there. Largely, if you look from a consumption point of view, I think Indian audience is slowly becoming a global audience. And I think uh, that's a great news for us because then we can experiment with so much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do you think the homegrown OTT players are gradually stealing a march over the international players? Okay. Um, 
that's 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 a slightly tough question i'll tell you why but because actor, right? you guys are churning out some great content <laughs> I, you are one of the uh, you know the best persons to answer this question actually <laughs> okay you put me in a very catch 22 situation but i shall answer this i i think this market it is a huge market we are a country of 1.4 billion people with almost 50% connectivity and more getting connected so while i'll say this that everybody has a place i think if you look at the uh, international content and now international players are also trying to dubbing international content in hindi tamil telugu being available on their platform the idea is obviously that this content should reach masses of the country uh if i was to compare an old with a you know other giants i would say we are one of the smallest platform our content budgets are the smallest our marketing budgets are the smallest our tech budgets are smallest so for us there is no choice but to ensure that every rupee every penny that we are spending is worth its while i i i i just can't sign off let's say you know a 6 lakhs on a digital influencer and say acha karne do you you will you will probably look at us working with 10 different influencers within that 6 lakh because we are wanting to extract the best same way for the content people uh, it becomes critical that within a certain budget they turn around a portfolio so to answer your question that we are churning out some great content if i have a finite budget and i have to turn around a great portfolio because as a marketer i demand a great portfolio from the content team otherwise i cannot push out library see it's not a show to show push on a ott platform you have to push the library you have to push the current shows and you have to push the brand so at any point of time you're focusing on these three things now if your library is not a great catalog of a thriller romance drama youth comedy horror people are not going to buy it people are not going to pay you your yearly pack fee why you have to have a certain threshold number you have to have a certain catalog to appeal to everybody because you know bijoya may love a good drama but that doesn't stop bijoya from loving a good thriller or loving a good horror right and before subscribing to a platform she would probably want to see what the catalog looks like is she subscribing only for one show or is she going to subscribe for at least you know if she's subscribing for a quarter she would at least like to utilize it to watch three to four shows which is the average number of shows a person watches on our platform in a quarterly uh, pack similarly for an annual pack at least six to seven shows are watched right these are our back end analytics so i think home grown ott platforms have a challenge where they have to cater to a certain amount of catalog for indian originals in various languages now at alt we have a very clear directive we have a very clear mission statement where we say first we conquer the hindi original space then we move into any other space there is if i look at a z5 let's say uh, from there i come they launch you know they launch with 12 uh, languages and their directive is probably to go as mass as you can as soon and therefore the need to churn out whereas the international players are sitting comfortably on a international library right they can choose to dub it in hindi malayalam telugu tamil uh, but what we have also seen is that especially in southern markets the acceptability for your platform will only come if you are pushing their language if you also have shows available that are made for them in their language with their familiar stars or actors so these are the kind of dynamics that will always work and i think markets big enough right now and growing at an exponential speed for everybody to play the game ultimately it's you know uh, best narratives the best revenue model that's going to survive uh, but till then i think the field is fairly open for everybody then well, lastly what are your views on the growing calls for regulating digital content including ott content i think uh, honestly bijoya self regulation is the way to go because uh, you know while i have the highest respect for rnb ministry and you know what they're thinking they must have uh, thought on certain uh, lines or certain actions and I'm, we look forward to what they are going to put out for us and have a dialogue with us uh, but honestly i think this is a medium which is growing this is a medium which is the future uh, and i think by cutting uh, by putting too many um, how do i say regulations you might end up killing great narratives uh, and that may not 
you know, find voice anywhere or see daylight. So I think if the IMB ministry and the council of OTT players can work together, you know, and agree on certain self-regulation guidelines, which anyway we've all signed up for, uh, that could be a start of a great partnership. Sorry, I can't. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Bajoya. Thank you Lovely. so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you.